All right, uh, simple circuit. We're gonna have a function generator. It's gonna output some signal, a sine wave. That sine wave is gonna come into this divider circuit. So one meg ohm resistor and then some other resistors. So one meg and 10K divides it by 100. One meg and 1K divides it by 1,000. One meg and 100 ohms divides it by 10,000. And one meg and 10 ohms divides it by 100,000. So big division. So this is what we're going to use. Uh, this is a, a decade box. And we have a one meg ohm resistor on the input. And then we have uh, the ability to dial in the uh, 10K, 1K, 100 ohms, that kind of thing, right? All right. So we're going to get our signal from our function generator up uh, oops, over there. And we're going to be at 1.2 kilohertz, 1 volt RMS. So we're going to bring that down as an input to this voltage divider. So let's take a look at the input. And we'll get around the camera. Let's take a look at that on the oscilloscope. So the oscilloscope will show us what we're inputting. So well, there we go, nice sine wave, one volt RMS. Okay, so let's divide it by 100. So I'm gonna look at the other side of that one megaohm resistor. So that's divided by 100, so poof, signal goes away. So we need some more amplification. And uh, what happened? I think my scope's not making contact. Oh, I'm sorry. My resistors weren't set correctly. So there we go. Uh, so that's dividing it by 100. And it's not, it's not uh, syncing very well because there's too much noise in, in this setup. So anyway, but it, it, it's, it's there, right? So let's divide it by 1,000. And you can kind of still see it wiggling up and down, but there's still whole lots of noise in the system. And then if we divide it by 10,000, it's just gone. Just gone, 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 gone. And then 100,000 is even, even worse, right? Same. All right, so let's start out with the big signal. And um, we're going to use an instrument, and we're going to be able to measure this signal uh, at really, really small voltages. Okay, so let's just go take a look at that. Uh, this is called a lock and amplifier. Uh, this one's made by EG&G, uh, Princeton, Lock and Amp P Princeton Applied Research. Um, it's a model 5101 lock and amplifier. And this machine can measure things between 5 hertz and 100 kilohertz. So we're at 1.2 uh, 1 um, kilohertz, so it's certainly within its range. And so how do we use this thing? Well, we first need to know... Uh, well, let me describe kind of how it works. So this is not how it works, but this is how you can kind of think of it. It's like an AM radio, right? You tell it what frequency you're interested in, and then it will listen only to that frequency. Now it does it a real fancy way. It mixes two signals and does a bunch of math. And But just think of it kind of like an AM radio. So it needs to know what frequency to listen to. So that's this wire. This wire goes up to our function generator. So this is just telling it, here is the frequency to use, the 1.2 kilohertz. So it comes in here as an external, as an external input. So now the thing is listening at 1.2 kilohertz. What's also very important for this machine is to know the phase information. So the phase is the difference between these two signals. So if the reference is at one phase and your signal is maybe 90 degrees out of phase or 180 degrees out of phase or something, the machine needs to know that. And so that's what these dials are over here. You can set, um, you can set uh, 90 degrees out of phase, 180 degrees out of phase, or you can turn this dial to set any arbitrary uh, difference in phase between the input uh, between the reference and the input. But in our case, they're both the same. It's just split off and divided down. So these have exactly the same phase information. So we're going to set this to zero degrees. So we say that the reference and the input are exactly the same phase. Okay, so now it knows what to listen to. And we're going to go over here. And we're going to set the gain, just like we did on the oscilloscope, we set the gain so that we're, th we're within range. And so we've set it to 25 millivolts. And we're reading about 
22, a little dirt on the screen here, 22 millivolts. So it's reading about 22 millivolts. So let me go to the function generator and cut the function generator by half. And our signal went down by half. We had 22 and now we have 11. Okay, so let me go back up again just to make sure it's working. So everything is working great. Okay, so let's go to the um, voltage divider and we're dividing by 100 right now. Let's divide by 1,000. Okay, so now we're dividing by 1,000 and poof, it went down. Okay, so we need more gain. So we're going to take this and 10 times more. And there we go. We're right back up again. All right. So let's go to the divider and let's divide by 10,000. And it went down again. So let's do more amplification. There's times 10 again. Right back up again. Perfect. Let's divide by 100,000. That's nuts. <laughs> And we'll divide 10 again, and we're right back up again. So, so right now we've gone from dividing by 100 to 1,000 to 10,000 to 100,000. This signal is way lost in the noise. It's just gone, gone, gone. But this machine still can pick it up because it knows to know where to listen and what phase to listen at. And um, so right now this thing we're using it at uh, 25 microvolts per full scale, but it'll go down to 10, 2.5, 1, 1 microvolt per, per, uh, for full scale. So this is an amazing instrument. It really can, it really can measure um, signals that you didn't think were possible. So um, the other thing that it has is these knobs here, which are just a low pass filter. So once you've got the signal and you're going to display it on the uh, display or meter, you just want a low pass filter it just to smooth it out. And that's all this is. It's like a Butterworth filter or something like Chippy Chev or something. I don't know. Anyway, you can turn this on and off and you can change the time constant of the filter. So that's all these knobs do. So how do you use this? So what would you use this for? So let me show you uh, a couple applications that I've used them for in, uh, in optics uh, applications and I'll, I'll draw you a picture. Okay. So let's say you have a, um, Let's say you have an LED and you have a photodiode and so the light goes in that one, the light comes out of that one. And so you're trying to measure this signal. You're trying to measure the brightness of the LED. Um, but uh, you want to do it in the daytime. Well, you can't measure the brightness of an LED in the daytime because the sun is super bright. But if you modulate the LED, if you run the LED into a generator, Okay, and you modulate the LED at exactly, say, 1.2 kilohertz, and you take the output of the photodiode and you put it into a lock in amplifier, and you set it up to measure exactly that frequency in that phase, um, the sunlight will be DC and it won't see it. Or even if, the, even if the room lights are flickering at 120 hertz or 60 hertz or 50 hertz, it doesn't matter. Um, as long as everything else is not flickering at 101.2 kilohertz, this thing will completely ignore it, right? So this is a good way of measuring LEDs. You'd have a function generator and you pulse the LED on and off. And then you take that signal from the function generator and you bring it over to the lock and amplifier and give it its reference input. And so you can use it this way. But let's say you have a light source that you, don't, you can't control uh, electronically. It, it's just a light bulb or, or some other type of thing that maybe maybe lum luminous paint, right? The paint glows and you want to measure it, but you you can't modulate it. There's no way to do that. So you have you have something here that glows. We'll just draw it like this. You have something here that glows, and you have your photodiode. Okay. Well, what you do is in between. You put this wheel. Sorry about my wheels not round, but you put this wheel. And it's a, a black aluminum wheel, and then you put slots in it, okay? And so you put all of these slots, I'm just gonna draw circles here. You put all these slots going around it, and then you spin the wheel. And so the light shines, either gets blocked by the, by the wheel or it shines through the hole. 
and then it goes over here to the detector. So if the wheel is spinning and going flash, 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 if you know the speed of the wheel, you could run that into your lock and amplifier, and that's your reference input. And then you can take your photodiode and you can run that in. So this is what's called a chopper wheel, optical chopping. And so you can pulse the light on and off just by uh, interruption of the beam by some, something that's opaque. So um, you can actually buy these things, um, but it spins around, chops the signal, and then you, your lock and amplifier locks in on that spinning wheel and, and measures it that way. So yeah, it's pretty cool.